Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out the HG Build Fighters R Gyagya. If y'all have been paying attention to the shelf that I used to have behind me in the old space, this is one that's been on the shelf that I've had for a long time. So I figure it's finally time we probably got around to building this kit up and seeing what it's like. I haven't built an HG Build Fighters kit, it feels like, for quite a while. So it's a good trip down memory lane. This one came out all the way back in 2014. Let's go ahead and check it out. So right there on the front of the box, you got to look at the Argyaga looking very cool with that silver and gold color scheme. Not really that big of a fan of the color scheme to be honest, but I do really like the design of this one. This is number 24 in the Build Fighters line, and again, this is from 2014. This is going way back. Taking a look at the bottom of the box, there you got some action poses showing some of the weapons. It's got the beam swords, it's got the Gatling guns in like the backs of the shoulders. It's also got these beam blades that come out of the shields, which is like these rotating shields up on the shoulders. So it's a combination of the Gyan and the R Jarja in terms of it's just uh, aesthetic there for what this is going for. There's a look at it Taylor with the Build Burning Gundam and then on the top of the box you got a look at what the kit is going to look like front and back when it's all painted up. It does have a very cool look. There's a little image there and this kit came out for 1800 yen. I've always thought this was an interesting kit because it came out before the R Jarja came out, which is the mobile suit that this design is based off of, and then it was a couple years before that kit came out as an HGUC kit, so I always thought that was kind of interesting about this one. We've seen something similar with the Momo Kapool, but we're still waiting on the HGUC Kapool. Hopefully someday we'll get that. Here on the menu, you've got the artwork from the front of the box, and then down here, some information and artwork for Gyanko and for the mobile suit there. Definitely one of the best parts of the series right there. If we go around to the back, it's just the color page of the instructions. So here on the center though, we've got a whole bunch more to see the customized plan showing how this is based off of the HG Gyan, but actually not really, only just in concept. At the time when this kit came out, most everything in here should be new. So we'll check that out once we take a look, a closer look at the runners. There you got a bunch of different action poses and things. Basically what was on the outside of the, of the box, I should say. Uh, but there's a lot of different resources there for you in terms of posing the kit, which is nice. There's your color guide down there. This is all in Japanese too. This is before they started printing English in the manual, so everything's in Japanese. There's about the weapons and then some of the other build fighter stuff. On the inside page, we've got the parts list and then everything else is just the construction of the kit. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. So first off, for the sticker sheet, it is pretty minimal as you just have a few black ones on there, a couple little gray bits, and then that uh, pink circle there for the mono eye. We've got some polycaps here, PC002 for those polycaps there in gray. And I've got a loose part on there, but after taking a look at all the runners, all of the runners are from 2014, so yeah, everything was brand new at the time, obviously, except for the polycap runner. Anyway, this is runner A in this light, slightly bluish gray color, so it's not actually in a molded silver, which I think probably would have been nicer. A lot of people, you know, either love or hate the molded silver, molded gold colors, but I think in this case, it would have been nice if it wasn't a molded silver anyway. Runner B here, some more parts in that same color. I see some large parts there for the shoulders, legs, and all that. Runner C here is in molded gold, which is nice, except for the beam effect parts. I wish those were in something different. I don't know, we'll see how those look on the finished kit. Interestingly though, this runner, and I believe maybe one of the other ones is actually marked for the valuable pod. So it is from 2014, it was new at the time, but it's just got a little bit different marking on it. Runner D is some joint parts and some other different uh, like secondary accent color parts. This is in a darker gray color. Runner E is in a third color of gray. This is that kind of slightly purplish gray color that we see for a lot of joint parts and things like that in HG kits. And then we've got Runner E2, which is a copy of this portion of the runner right there. Runner F is back to some pieces here in that molded gold. And finally, Runner G is our clear green effect parts, which is in this very nice, bright, fluorescent, clear green. It looks great. So there's everything. Fair amount of parts in there for an HD. That 1800 yen price tag seems just about right for what I would expect for this. Let's go ahead and get it all built up and see what it's like. All right, guys, so here it is all built up. And not only does it have a very cool design, although I do kind of still wish that that gray, light gray color would have been molded in like a molded silver. I think that just would have looked cool, even though some people like or dislike that particular color of plastic. I think in this case, it would have been a fitting color choice for that. But anyway, nevertheless, it does look good in the colors that it's molded in. And aside from just a very cool design, some nice articulation, I think the most enjoyable part of this kit, as you guys will see, is going to be just all the different weapon options with this, everything that you can do with all the different effects 
effect parts and everything, so I think it's going to be a very fun one to actually play around with, doing some different poses and things like that, with all the different weapon options that you can do. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. Well, let's start off by just taking a look at the kit, and then we'll get into all the accessories. So for the stickers, you got little black stickers there on the crotch, on the front of the knees, on here on the chest, one, two, three, four little black stickers there, a black sticker for the eye section, and then you place that pink sticker on top of that. So you can place the pink sticker on to the left or the right or up or down, whatever, I just placed it in the center. But the unfortunate problem is that you'll, if you want to move the mono eye, you'll have to take off the sticker and put it back on. I'm sure there's only so many times you can do that before that's not going to be working for you. And then here on the head, that's just one big solid gold piece, but that black that you see in the center there, it's actually a gray and black. That's a couple of stickers there on the sides of the crest there on the head to make that separated color in between. So while the mono eye doesn't move, the head will move up to about there before the back of it's starting to hit like the back of the torso, down to there. Up and down movement's pretty good. I do find the gap between the head and the torso to be a little bit large, so I kind of wish that this like frill on the back of the head there was a little bit longer or something just to hide that gap. Or what you could do is modify that to make the neck a little bit shorter. That would limit your articulation a little bit more, but I think it would look nicer if there was just a little bit less of a gap there in the head. It depends on the angle that you look at the kit, you don't really notice it, but if you look at it from like the front on angle, it does look a bit odd. The articulation in the stomach section is kind of interesting, how it bends back at like a joint towards the back of the body, and then it bends forward at a joint here at the front. So you do have a little bit of nice forward and back bend there for that. Side to side is gonna be a little bit, but not really all that much. Rotation is going to be a little bit limited just because of the design of this. You will have a little bit of rotation side to side. I think it should be enough for doing whatever pose you want to do, but it is going to be slightly limited there. The skirting armor, while we're here, that does move up. These are joined, but you can clip them apart in the center if you want those to be individually articulated. The side skirts as well will move up a little bit there. The back skirt in this case does not move at all. The backpack is not really a backpack, just like the back of the torso, so nothing moves there either. Shoulders have a poly cap that will pull out to the front like that for forward articulation. Obviously our shield bits here are on this connection arm that will allow those to kind of move around. You can rotate that and bring those forward up to the front like so or around to the back. You can also take those off and use them with a separate gauntlet piece which we'll see in just a bit. So let's just take that off for the moment. The shoulder armor moves separately from the arm. You can bring that up to about 90 degrees then bring the arm up to yeah about 90 degrees before it's going to be popping off the shoulder. So upward articulation of the arm is going to be a little bit limited it seems. But then the rest of the arm is going to be working fairly normally, just for rotation there. Double joint at the elbow, giving you a pretty full bend. The wrist is just on a ball joint. These hands are the only hands that we have with this kit, unfortunately, so just a set of holding hands, that's all you have to work with. At the hips, you've got some rotation there at the top of the thigh. You can bring the legs out pretty far to the side, up to the front, pretty far there, and you got a double joint here in the knee, giving you a pretty good bend. Not as full as you might like, but it is pretty good. It's more than 90 degrees there. The ankles will move side to side, forward and back. No toe bend here, the foot is just one big solid piece. And you have a couple of hollow gaps there, so it's a half detail, half hollow up underneath the feet, but some cool thruster detail in there on the sides of the feet and then around on the back of the legs as well. And for weapon options, we obviously have this sword here stored on the side skirt. And you can't put that on the other side, there's no hole on that side, but you can remove this off of here if you do want to just go ahead and pull that off of there entirely. The handle does pull out of there and then you have this little connection piece, that's what kind of keeps the handle in place. You need to remove that, that's just like a temporary piece there. Once you remove that bit, then you can place your effect part in here for that, and it makes for a pretty nice sword. Cool effect part, nice bright green color there for that, but that's one sword. And then here's our other sword option, which is quite cool, and we saw in the parts that you do have actually a gold option for that, so if for whatever reason you wanted this to be just all entirely gold, you could do that if you want, but I'm just gonna stick with the green effect parts here. Then you have this kind of little mini shield here which also serves as a beam sword like that and what you can do is actually plug these in together this just clips into place here like that and it makes a two-ended sword or you can just have this out as two separate swords like that now uh, your other leftover part is another handle of this so actually if you take that off of there and use this leftover handle piece then you could have two of these swords if you preferred, they just wouldn't be able to join together, so just an option there for you. But aside from that, these effect parts from the swords can also be used in the shield. So here's our one that I just removed earlier. 
that effect part goes into there like so. And if we remove this connection arm here on the back of that and we've got two of these guys, one for the left and one for the right side, kind of handle options here for the shield. Plug that onto there and then this would basically make the shield stored onto the side of the arm. And then you can plug your effect part into there and this will rotate to the front. Now I'll pull the arm off of here to show you because once this is in hand, there's like a, the handle is not perfectly round, it's square at the top, so it does hold it pretty well there, but this part that's kind of supposed to meant to clip onto the arm, it doesn't actually like clip onto anything. I don't know why they made it like this, so that it's so wide, it doesn't actually really do anything. It's very perplexing why they didn't just make that so that it actually clips onto the arm properly because now it is weighed down a little bit there at the wrist, unfortunately. And the other reason why I wanted to take off the arm here is just because the arm keeps falling off. It does seem to be a weak point of this kitten, which is unfortunate because this does carry a lot of weight on its arms, whether you have the shield up on the shoulder or the shield in the hand like that there is. And like the Gatling gun here in the back, which I haven't even talked about yet, but there's like a lot of stuff going on here on the arm and the connection to the body is unfortunately a little bit weak there at that polycap ball joint. But anyway, yes, you can use the shield there attached onto the forearm, sort of like a crash shield similar to the Mercurius from Gundam Wing. But then we have some more effect parts and that would be our eight effect parts here for the shield. So these little gold bits here on the side will flip out, plug your effect parts in. And it's gonna look like that. And then of course, like I said, you can manipulate the shield more to the front or to the back or to the side or up and use them like a beam helicopter or something like that. Or of course you can use these with the shield in the hand. Now, just the last thing about the Gatling guns, they can't really move forward. You'd think, okay, maybe you can move the arm to the side and you can swing that up underneath, but it doesn't actually move that way. They do have a little bit of movement to the back, but not to the front, so it's a bit weird. Basically to use those, you just have to lift the arm up like that and have him shooting something like that with those uh, little Gatling guns. I was gonna say beam Gatling guns, but I don't remember if they're beam or not. Anyway, so as you guys can see, a lot of options here with the weapons. All right guys, as we wrap up the review, taking a look at some different action poses here, you guys will see there's just a bunch of different ways that you can use these weapons in combination with the shields and the different swords and beam effects and everything. And as I said before, I think that's definitely one of the nicest points about this kit, but it is not only that, you do also have some very nice articulation in order to do that, some good construction overall. Basically, there's not a lot of seam lines on this kit. There's a couple, I didn't mention it, but there's one on like on the shoulders, the main shoulder parts going over through the center of the shoulders. That's gonna be kind of, I guess, the main seam line that you really need to worry about. Most of the rest of the kit overall is pretty good. Also, the scabbard for the sword on the side skirt there is also two halves of sandwich together, so you have a long seam line down the end of that. But overall, nice articulation, good amount of details, not too much in the way of stickers, not too much in the way of seam lines, uh, and there's a ton of weapon options, so pound for pound, a very good kit for the value of this one. And while I do have the RJ RJ kit, I'm sorry that I can't show you guys a comparison with the two of them side by side as that one's already packed. I can't really get to it at the moment. Between the two of them, as far as which one I would recommend, this one does have a little bit more of that Build Fighters flavor, which some people who just prefer uh, Universal Century might just prefer the original design. But I don't think that this one goes too far into like the super robot kind of styling that we see in some of like the Build Fighters variations, I think. Even if you are a, a pretty like UC purist sort of type where you just prefer Universal Century designs, I think that this one and it does still have a lot of appeal even for those type of fans or if you're a more Build Fighters fan obviously this uh, should appeal to you as well but let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below as always and of course you can check out some different HG kits include Build Fighters kits, Universal Century kits, everything else there at USA Gundam Store the link as always is down in the video description along with my coupon code there for you guys to use to save 10% off everything there on the site and as always guys thanks so much for checking out the video liking the video commenting subscribing is all greatly appreciated it helps out a whole lot until next time hope you're all having a great day I'll See y'all later. Bye guys.